Hey guys, welcome to the Preview Alliance podcast. It's Sarah, and today we have a super special guest. Her name is Madison. She's my neighbor, but also one of my go-tos for on Insta for everyday motherhood and life. So welcome. Thank you so much. If you hear something in the background, my daughter's here with us today. And you know what? Mom life. Literally. Like, we, we love it. And mm-hmm. how old is sweet girl? She's six weeks. So you literally. Yeah. You're in the trenches. We're in the trenches. She's okay. attached to me at all times. Uh huh. I have a little bit of separation anxiety when I'm away from her. Which is normal. But I'm so excited to be here. And it's been so fun being your neighbor and like getting to know you and all the cool things that you do. Well, we are excited for you to just share more about your motherhood story. One thing I love about your Instagram is you're real. Thank you. And we talk about this all the time on the podcast. There is, and actually there was a study that just came out that like perfectionism that's presented on Instagram, how it impacts like a mom's mental health. Oh yeah. And you give us the real. I'm like, no makeup in the morning, hairs like this on my head. Yeah. <laughs> um, every day is not easy. My toddler wakes up still and she's two and a half and then I have this one waking up. So I do try to keep it as transparent as possible. So thank you for saying yeah, that. Yeah, we appreciate that. Because I mean, I always, back when I was nursing, my theory was some of these days for my patients was some of their worst days. So why would I go in super gland, super just making them, I just want to be real to them. And yes. I think that's like how I compare with you. You just do it. So good. Thank you. Now you mentioned your toddler, mm-hmm. Aubrey Grace. Yes. How so? Two and a half. Two and a half. Two mm-hmm. and a half. How has been going from one to two been? Yeah, I think going from zero to one is a lot harder. But going from one to two, I felt more at ease because I knew what to expect. Um, every kid's different. Um, I'm not saying that, but she's been a great baby, so it's been really, really awesome going from one to two. Um, I thought Aubrey Grace was going to lose it when I brought her home. So I was really nervous about that. But the bond was instant. Yeah. I know they're going to fight when they get older. Yeah, the teenage years might be a little wild. Yes. But but, that's okay. But it's been good. Zero to one was real hard. What do you think was hard about that zero to one? Not being prepared for, like, the sleep deprivation. Okay, yeah. Um, Nursing was so new. So just, I didn't know if my milk was going to come in. What does it feel like when it comes in? Um, just all the unknowns, yeah. the anxiety of being a first mom. And it was during like the start of COVID. So we were at home at like at all times. So it's been so different this time. We've been out and about. Um, our family's been able to come over. We're still careful, but um, it's just been a, a different experience. Now, the sleep deprivation, I relate to that so much. I don't feel like anybody told me. Mm-mm. <laughs> I, you know, I heard they like, we call it like gaslighting. They'd be like, oh, you'll sleep when they're older. Yes. Or I, di- I didn't sleep for two and a half mm-hmm. years with you or yes. whatever. Yes. But you kind of just think, okay, the baby's going to sleep eventually, right? Right. Uh-huh. And then they don't sometimes. Right. <laughs> yeah. And no one told me what happens when you don't sleep. Right. Mm-hmm. So we're talking, we're getting more emotional. Mm-hmm. Oh, we, yeah. You know, anger. I got angry with James, our littlest, because I was, I had like that mom rage. And I'm like, why is this happening? Mm-hmm. He would cry in the middle of the night and I'd be like so mad about it. And I'd be like, Sarah, he's a baby. He mm-hmm. needs me. But it was like, I needed that sleep. Oh, yeah. But then I felt until I said it to some of my other friends mm-hmm. and Whitney, I was like, why am I feeling this way? And she's like, because sleep is a basic function of life. Oh, my goodness. And we also use, like, sleep deprivation for terrorists, Mm -hmm. like, to interrogate them. Oh, my gosh. But moms. I feel that. (laughs) You know, but moms were just like. Yeah, you just have to go, go, go. So what would you tell, like, someone who's fixing to have a baby about sleep? Mm -hmm. What would you wish someone would have said to you? Mm. I don't don't like the thing that people say, like, sleep when the baby sleeps because I think that used to make me really upset because I'm like, no, because I have to do the laundry then. I have to cook then. I, yeah. You know what I mean? I'm trying to think of the best. <laughs> Bomber. I'm trying to think of the best advice. Um, I guess ask your partner for as much help as they can give you. Yeah. Um, I, I'm a type of person that I want to do everything myself. Mm-hmm. So I'm like really strictly breastfeeding. But Quentin's always like, let, let me do a bottle. Like just make one at night. Like try, try to accept help when it's offered yeah that's probably the best advice because i'm i don't i did not take that advice but it's really important if you have somebody offering to help if you're 
mother-in-law wants to come over, if your mom wants to come over, if a friend wants to come over, actually accept the help. And that's like one thing that I had to let go of because mm -hmm. I'm like, I feel like I should do it all. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I burn so. out mm -hmm. and then I like melt down and they're like, I want to help. And it's, it was me realizing asking for help mm -hmm. is actually a sign of like me recognizing being strong and being a better mom. Mm -hmm. But it's like all this mom shame, right? Or oh, you feel yes. guilt. Oh, yeah. Or you you think, oh, well, so-and-so's doing it and she's mm -hmm. doing it all. Why can't I? Right. In reality, we all can't do everything. Exactly. So that's a great piece of advice. And you said nursing. Yes. And did you feel like it's going better this time? I do. I, lo I love it so much. And that is not the case for everybody. I know that. And I just think if you're feeding your baby, that's the best way. Mm -hmm. Um but nursing is going great. Um, after two weeks with both of them, I felt like, okay, I've got it. Um, the first two weeks are the hardest. And then once you get past that, to me, it's like easy breezy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's encouragement. It's just, I think the two weeks are hard for everybody. Oh, my goodness. So hard. It's, and it doesn't sometimes happen just magically. Nope. Mm -mm. And it's a learning. Like, they have to learn. You have to learn. And, you know, Will's nursing versus James nursing was completely different. Was it? How they latched, how yes. they did. And I was just like, wait, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Like, how I would hold one versus the other. So true. So I kind of had to, I, you think, you're like, oh, I think I should know this. Yeah. Every kid puts so you kind of like on mm -hmm. this whole like, okay, I'm learning. And your body is different. Like, my milk was in so quick with Aubrey Grace because I went into labor like one day before she was due. So I feel like it was already in. Um, with her, it took like four days to come in, and mm -hmm. she dropped birth weight, and I'm like, oh gosh, that's what am stressful. I doing wrong? Yeah, yeah. Um, and nothing. You were doing nothing right. wrong. Yeah, it's nothing wrong, and it's completely normal for them to drop a little bit and then, you know, go up in the next two weeks. So that was different. Aubrey Grace was like two pounds heavier in a week, and she was down a pound. So it's just being aware that that is normal and it's okay. And um, yeah. I, now I remember correctly. You guys had to go in, right? Were you leaking? Okay. Yes. Okay, so share that whole story because I, I feel like that was, like, stressful for me to even hear about it for you. Yeah, that was crazy because it was so different from my first go around. Um, but I was at a birthday party, and I was talking to my friend, and she's a nurse practitioner. I was like, I woke up, and I thought I peed my pants. Well, because you do that when you're pregnant. <laughs> you do. You do. And that's so normal. You sneeze. And you, uh -huh. it's like, oh, whoops. Uh-huh. That yep. just happened. But this time I woke up and I was like, it was a little bit more than usual. And then I felt some trickling down my leg throughout the day. You expect like this big gush if your water is breaking. Yeah. Um, but it wasn't like that for me. My friend was like, you need to go get checked. I think your amniotic fluid is leaking. I'm like, oh, okay. And I was only a week and until my due date. So it was, you're like, it's fine. Yes. If this is time, this is how it's going to happen. This is how it's going to be. So um, we went to the hospital. They did a few tests. And I was an emotional wreck because Aubrey Grace and I are so close. And I feel like just, she was my first. And I was like, oh my gosh, my separation anxiety. And, and you probably had in your mind had a way you were going to prepare her to say, okay, I'm, I'm going in yeah. now. This is what you're going to expect. And it kind of went quicker it went so quick I'm like mom come over my aunt came over and they just like you know they did her nails like had a little spa night with her which was really cute um but anyway we went to the hospital they did three tests the first two they're like no your fluid levels are completely normal I don't know what the first the first one that they did but then they did a swab and it was fluid that was actually link leaking and they were shocked they're like all right, and you're contracting four minutes apart. We need to, you know, go ahead and mm -hmm. just start this process. Yeah. So. That, so that, did you feel like any sort of way, I mean, were you just like, okay, let's just let it go? Or were you anxious about it? Or Well, I was like, we don't need to go in. Yeah. Um, it's fine. It's, yeah. I, my water is not breaking. So if you ever feel like something is up, just call your doctor. Because yeah. Because it really could be time. Um, but I was just ready. I was, you know, 39 weeks, like, it's, it's, it, you're evicted. Let's go ahead and get this. I remember walking, James, and you were pressure washing. And yes. You were very pregnant. Yes. And I'm like, she's nesting. Yes. And, but I also, it brought me back to when I was so pregnant with James mm -hmm. in the summer of last year and just thinking, I wanted him out. Yes. And to me, in the third trimester was so hard. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Maybe she's okay. She's good. She's good. What during pregnancy was a little challenging for you? Um, I think we've talked about this a little bit before, but I 
have more anxiety, depression, like all that kind of stuff during pregnancy. Okay. Um, just not looking myself. I can't eat as much. I, I have really bad nausea when I'm pregnant, like just kind of throughout. Yeah. Um, but everything's worth it. So that's what I try to tell myself throughout the whole pregnancy. Like it might be hard, but like this is worth it. It is. It's so much But fun. I think people don't say that enough. Mm -hmm. Like I think people feel like we should be very grateful and blessed, which we so are. True. Yeah. And some people feel like I can't say this is hard. Yeah. And then you feel bad just being like, yes, I really wanted this baby or mm -hmm. I'm very this, but I want to eat what I want to eat. Yes. Or like I'm having anxiety if everything's okay or if oh, I'm, yeah. you know, every, I know I used to always kind of hold my breath for every ultrasound. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Oh, every ultrasound. Uh -huh. um, I'm so glad you said that um, on Instagram. I'm always like, am I going to lose followers? Because I'm like, today was hard mm -hmm. or yeah, no. Um, this is what how pregnancy actually is and some things that you might feel, but it's good for people to be aware of what they might feel like and it is normal and yeah. to not freak out over every little thing. And that's one thing it's called like I think it's Whitney has a term toxic positivity. Ah. That I like that word. It can be like where you feel like you can't be honest. Oh yeah. Or you can't share. Mm -hmm. And how you feel is how you feel. Oh, yeah. No one can, like, say, hey, you shouldn't feel that way because you're pregnant. And mm -hmm. I've been trying to get pregnant and I can't. Yes. Mm -hmm. And, you know, because we talked to some other people who's, like, really struggled with infertility. Uh -huh. And they're like, I feel like now I'm pregnant. I can't say it's hard because I was so wanting this. Yeah. So I think it's honestly with moms, like, we, we're damned if we do and damned if we right. don't sometimes. Yeah. And that's, like, we have to just normalize. Oh, yeah. And I think it's like when someone struggles with infertility, they've already been through the ringer. They could, they should say whatever they want to say. Yeah, like, you've been through it. Yeah, you know? like, yeah. Um, but I, I, there's just so many things throughout pregnancy that you just don't hear about until you're no pregnant. Yeah, like not eating past five o'clock. That's like one of the things I could not do because I would wake up and like heartburn, oh. gas. <laughs> Gas yes. pains. Okay, the gas pains, I, I was like, I'm dying. Mm -hmm. And I, one of my friends was like, you need to do a downward dog pose <laughs> and get that gas out. And I was like, what are you talking about I right now? I would have told me that. And she was like, just try it. And she had a great OB who was like, listen, something about being pregnant and gas just, <laughs> just goes left. That's so good. But it's just like you don't know that. Mm -hmm. And your husband doesn't know that probably unless he's an OB or a high-risk doctor and he's going to look at you like, wait, what? Yeah. Um. So, yes, that was a that was a moment. The fact of like – I was very anxious both pregnancies. Mm -hmm. um, I think with James, I was more detached because I had had a couple of miscarriages and I was afraid, mm -hmm. I, which it was like almost a protective me mechanism that I had with him. Like maybe if I don't like say it or like recognize it, like yeah. I I won't lose him so bad if right. I do. Oh. Um, so to me, I was always just like, I would just be like, yep, I'm pregnant and kind of just not make a deal. Yeah. But that was me. And then I, there have friends who've had, picture perfect pregnancies yeah. never had any issue mm -hmm. and then postpartum has been really hard for them yeah so i think it's like we try to spread awareness that like yes there is such things called perinatal um anxiety depression so it can start in pregnancy oh my goodness yes and that's normal mm -hmm. and we want to recognize it and mm -hmm. we want to talk about it so like moms are not sitting there oh yeah and going wait mm -hmm. what what's wrong with me oh yeah there's nothing mm -hmm. and we got to support that and I thank you for sharing that because, oh, yeah. honestly, people, it's, it's just all what we're trying to do is we're trying to change the narrative for moms. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's funny. Clinton, for both pregnancies, like, as soon as you have them, it's like something flips in you and you're, like, yourself again. Yeah. And I'm like, it's so opposite for so many. But now that you're saying that, it's it's interesting that a lot of people – are experiencing the same things that I did. That's, I didn't know that. We're actually, you know, our previous alliance, our company pay, um, women who we have, which we have um, over a hundred right now. Mm -hmm. And most things I'm hearing from the first trimester into the third, that's kind of where they're at. That is they're saying, I'm having scary thoughts. Mm -hmm. I'm having a lot of anxiety. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking, how's my life changed? Can I do this? Yeah. What's if I can't, what have I done? Mm -hmm. And they're all really normal. Yeah. But they're like, I never could say that to someone before. Right. Mm -hmm. So, interesting. and actually, you know, 
I started, which no one ever recognized in me, mm-hmm. with Will, especially when I had really bad postpartum depression, it really kind of started at the anatomy scan mm-hmm. when I figured out there was an issue. Yes. So, it you know, we're just trying to say, let's check in on, like, pregnant mom's feelings. Yeah. Let's talk to them about anxiety. What can we do? Yeah. What can we do to support them? So, like, a lot of women are not, like, they don't – it kind of gets worse in postpartum. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Luckily, I think yours probably is just like probably the surge of hormones too, right? The hormones for me during pregnancy are wild. I mean, I'm not saying there's nothing postpartum, yeah. but like compared to pregnancy, it's just postpartum wise. Um, I'll have moments where I just want to cry, and I'm like, why? Why do I want to cry right now? Yeah, because it's it's overwhelming. Yeah, it's something new, and Am you're I not doing? sleeping. No sleep. Yeah, the night sweats. Oh my gosh, let's talk about it. Oh, I mean, sheets are wet. Uh-huh. Like. Back of my neck, beads of sweat rolling down. I'm like, oh, my God. But mm-hmm. It's wild. And they start pretty soon after it. Mm-hmm. And no one had told me that either. Oh. And I woke up and I was like, what's wrong? What's wrong? Yeah. And then I don't know if you've hit the hair loss stage yet. Not yet. I can't wait for that round okay. two. Your hair just changes a lot. It does. And it falls out up. uh-huh and you have these like bridgerton wispies it's it's a whole look i remember one day will he was who was our oldest was like hey mom did you mean to do your hair like that <laughs> and i was like thank you for humbling me no actually you and your brother did that to me <laughs> yeah, you <laughs> you that new taylor swift song right it's like yeah, it's you're me. the problem yeah, yeah. You're right there you right. not me yeah but that and I think, do you have any issues with, like, you're so on the spotlight with your social media. Mm-hmm. Like, with putting, like, you said your pregnancy and your body changing during mm-hmm. pregnancy. Is it, do you feel like you have, like, you have to bounce back? Or are you giving yourself grace? Definitely giving myself grace. For me, this time it was, like, and I don't think anybody told me this. It's, like, rapid weight loss. But the, with breastfeeding and your body, your uterus, like, shrinking back down. And I know not everybody is, was like is like that, but... Um, now I'm packing on more, like I weigh more than I, I don't know. It, it's confusing to talk about, but no, I don't feel like you have to bounce back at all. Um, I'm giving myself definitely after number two, my body is completely different. Mm-hmm. The skin elasticity is just like gone uh-huh. <laughs> and in my stomach. Um, I always felt like my hips just never went back. Yes. Like they pop all the time uh-huh. <laughs> when I walk. Yeah. Just loose feeling. Um, walking has helped me so much. Um, not yeah, all the time. it's for my mental health. Honestly, I walk to clear my mind, mm-hmm. and it's good for you too. The vitamin D, the fresh air, everything. Yes. It kind of chills out baby James, which is very hard to chill that child <laughs> out. But it, I just tell moms too. Like the biggest things I'd say is like for me, postpartum was I needed to like do a little something for me. Yeah, if that was brushing my hair, putting it up, brushing my teeth, Amen. making my bed. Whatever I needed. Why does making the bed just make you feel so good? I don't know what it is, but it's like I can look in a room if our bed is not made, Mm -hmm. which happens, unfortunately, more times than not sometimes. (laughs) And I just am like, feel so like overwhelmed. Yes. It's almost sensory. I don't know why Uh it's sensory to me, but I'm just like, I need to look at something pretty. Yes. And then now as a mom, I've had these weird things, which it's like certain textures. I I think it's because we're touched out a lot. Mm -hmm can like rub on my skin like my shirt's like wrong or a tag or to probably tmi if i haven't shaved my legs i'm kind of rub and i'm like oh no yes like it will tip me okay and i'm like this never happened before i was a mom mm-hmm. and i've talked so to whitney weird. about this and she's like i think because as moms were so sensory overloaded mm-hmm. so we're like if we even think about like our kids tv shows mm-hmm. we all let our kids watch tv show or mm-hmm. ipad right right their voices the sounds the colors their toys, mm-hmm. those blinkings, the beeping. Yes. And then, like, our kids won't on us. All the time. As literally you're nursing. <laughs> you know, like, they they want to touch us. Yes. So I think we just get so overwhelmed. Mm-hmm. It's like that last thing that we probably could let go. Yes. And so that's my theory. I think you're 100% right. So, like, some tips postpartum when you're dealing with, like, all the overwhelmingness, like, Walk when you can, make your bed, shave your legs. Yeah. <laughs> like, have a moment for yourself. Shower. I put the dock and tie right next to the shower yeah. and pop in. Um, yeah, yeah. Like, just go to lunch. Walk around. Walk you don't even, in. like, have to buy anything. No, you don't have to buy anything. I go just to lunch. And yeah. Get out of the house. Um, And then I need to do this on Instagram, but, like, husbands need to know some tips on what to say. Oh, boy. <laughs> Oh boy. 
<laughs> pregnancy. Oh. You look beautiful. Like, yeah. In the morning, like, wow, you did great last night. You know? Not did the baby wake up. And you're like. <laughs> yeah, that's the best. I, I've told Bill before through both newborn stages. I've never thought about like harming him more. <laughs> Valid. Then when he go when he snored through uh -huh. the 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 multiple wake ups or goes, they had a great night last night, didn't they? And I'm just like, <gasps> uh, no, I woke up five times. <laughs> you know the rage that like enters my body. Um, I think husbands don't get it, and I think it's hard because they see us and like they don't see our bumps really for a while. Like they know we're pregnant, right? So I think it takes it longer for them, and it's not their bodies. Yeah. But in the same sense, like, they need to, you think, I tell Bill, I'm like, you should be able to read my mind. And he can't. Right. So it's me saying, again, I don't want to ask for help. Right. So it goes back on me. But I need to be more like, can you take this shift? Can you take the 8 till 1 a.m. shift? Let yeah. me get this. Mm -hmm. Or can we get up together? You change the diaper. You hand him to me to yeah. feed. You put the baby back down. Yeah. Because that can be half the challenge right there. So true. Because they're like, oh, I'm up. I'm not going to do this. Uh, that made me think of, did you feel like the first two weeks, they're like so. She's like, uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. You remember the first two weeks? I feel like they're still asleep. Oh, they are. And then they wake up. Mm -hmm. And you, I'm one of my good friends, she goes, I have the most, this is the easiest thing. Sleeps all the time. I was like, oh, no. She has not woke up yet. Mm -hmm. And she looked at me and she's like, what do you mean? I was like, I just don't want you to like lose your mind because you're yeah. it's coming. Right. And think something's wrong. Like, uh -huh. no, they're just like so sleepy and sweet. And, and they say sweet, but they just wake up. They wake up <laughs> and it's like they want to be in your womb. They're like, hey, I'm not in the womb anymore. Yes. And then I think it's like six weeks that something happens with their little GI system. Mm-hmm. And that's really, I remember six weeks was really hard for us. Yes. Lots of gas, like uh -huh. wanted to eat, but then would make him upset. I mean, it's just, again, I don't think people told me that either. Uh -huh. No. And I remember telling my pediatrician, I was like, what is going on? She's like, they're basically learning to poop right now at six okay. weeks. Yeah. And it's, so they have that to, they have to change the whole thing. She's like, it's so hard. I'm so sorry. Well, you're, she's learning that right now. She is learning. Yeah, that's so interesting because six weeks, I'm like, whoa. Uh huh. You're like so much more talkative. I can't like leave her sitting down as uh -huh. long because she's like wanting to look and walk around. Uh huh. Um, so it's just different. I think the hard thing for one to two with Will, with James, was honestly probably six weeks on because James did start to demand. Uh huh. Yeah. So in the initial beginning, James was a blob to him. And I literally just tugged him around and wore him. And it was yeah. like, it didn't really affect his life. Uh -huh. So true. So when she starts coming to life, it might be interesting just to see yeah. how Aubrey Grace was like, oh, wait. Uh, yeah. She's a person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's so true. Um, With, no one told me that either. Everybody's mm -hmm. like, oh, it's in the beginning and they'll have outbursts. And it's like, no, I don't think so. Let's try this side. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. She's just like, I know. She's like, so hungry. Let's talk what are some of the things as now second go around that you're like, these are the baby items oh, we need. Wait, that's so fun. I love this. Um, Dockatot. I love the Dockatot. Okay. Or yeah. Snuggle Me. Just like a safe little mm -hmm. cuddly spot. Yes. Yeah. Safe spot. Or there's like the Mamaru, which Aubrey Grace did not like. None of my boys liked. Okay, so it's just like hit or miss. They like the Fisher Price puppy swing. Mm -hmm. Mom always always said like, you know Fisher Price, like those yeah. are the bread and butter. Yeah. Like, honestly, I would do that route versus spending two hundred dollars on the Mamaru. And I I tell all my friends that. Oh yeah. And like don't. Mm -mm. You, if someone gifts it to you, great, oh, cool, yeah. right? Yeah. But, like, my kids didn't like it. Yeah. And we've let some of our friends borrow it, and their kids didn't like it either. So um, the little bouncy seat. Oh, uh, yes. Kids love that. Uh-huh. We don't have one, and I'm like. They go. love that. Love that. Um, a good bathtub. Yep. You know, just, and they're so affordable now. Yep. Um, trying to think of what else. A double stroller for two. Uh-huh. Just. A, you know, we're always out walking. So, yep. Um, Do you have a favorite baby wrap? I love the Sully, Sully wrap. Okay, yep. Um, but, you know, 
we have just a more heavy duty one if we were to go like hiking or when mm -hmm. she's bigger. Because um, you need to be hands free. Oh yeah, that's the biggest thing. If you want to get anything done, you have to be hands free. I used to what I would do with James, especially when he's little, is I would be like, okay, I'm gonna put you on. Mm -hmm. But I tried to do when he was napping. I was like, I want me time during that. So yeah. I try to do everything I can when he's awake. Yes. Because I'm like, I need my me time. Definitely. I couldn't really nap like you. Like, I couldn't, like, you know. Yeah. But I wanted to do something for me. Heck yeah. So I always tell moms that, too. Like, you can tote them around with you. Yes. It gets harder. Yeah, definitely. But in the beginning, make it work for you. Heck, yeah. I, I didn't do that with Aubrey Grace, but this time I'm like, I'm wrapping you up. There's too much to do. Uh -huh. to, uh -huh. I've literally ate loads of laundry. <laughs> you have to be strapped on or you're going to get upset. Yeah. Um, The Ollie swaddle i love those They're i obsess with those so good worth the money it is and then you just they wash up good yes i use the same ones from wills to james so good you know so and it's like the easy in the middle of the night i always tell moms okay we don't need to be talking about buttons in the middle of the night oh so true that's gonna make everybody just lose their mind yeah and then we want just like snaps or velcro yes and i did these little nursing gown things for uh -huh. um james it's like you tied at the bottom those rock Love those. I was like, Phew. I'm like, Easy. anything that makes it, we had, you probably have this in your nurse or in your room, uh -huh. like a diaper wipe setup, like there. Yes. So, like, I roll over, it's right there. I mean, it's not cute, Game it's not pretty. It, it, nothing's about pretty. Yeah. We're about functionality. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a huge thing because I'm like, you don't want to be walking to the nursery. Yeah. Like, to get all your supplies, so true. have it next to you. Mm -hmm. Um, I know for nursing moms, oatmeal was a key to me and blue yes. Gatorade. Yes. Do you have any other like little body armor? Okay. I do the oatmeal too. Okay. Um, uh, coconut water okay. helps with nursing a okay. lot. What about like for you personally, like your postpartum care, what was some like things you loved and used? Yeah, this time was way better. Okay. I, I they had to cut me to like two degree or okay. whatever, whatever okay. it's called. Um, so it took a little bit longer to heal. Um, but I love the ice packs. Okay. Yeah. Um, I love the Freedom Mama stuff. Like okay. the full pack of the. So you just bought it and was yeah. like, I know I have everything. Yeah. Someone's already thought about what all I need. I, I did have it, but you really don't have to okay. because they give it to you at the hospital. And that's why I tell people, take everything from the hospital. 100% load up, and if you need more, they'll give you more. They will. Mm -hmm. um, the little witch hazel. Yep. Um, Dermaplat. I mean, I used all of that that they gave me. The little spray bottle. Oh, the puree uh -huh. bottle. Uh-huh. Like, you can get that from Freedom Mama. It has, like, a little curve. Yeah. And I just thought, this is perfect. Yeah. I mean, why spend your money if... You get Take all everything. Me. They'll give you diapers. They'll give you mm -hmm. butt paste. They'll yes. give you wipes. They'll give you like little hats and. Oh yeah, I tell my friends, don't forget to take the extra diapers and wipes. I yeah, mean, it's... no, because like they they can't use it again once it's been in your room anyway. Mm -hmm. So they're just gonna throw it away. So everybody so has good. that blanket. Mm -hmm. Everybody has those baby everybody blankets. Everybody has a blanket. Everybody has them. I still have them from like Will and James. I'm like, yeah. I have like twenty. They're special. They are. <laughs> it's so special. What I guess this would lead to a great other thing is, uh -huh. what would, from you being on Instagram, mm -hmm. what do you hear from your followers? Like, are they like, they tell you, but maybe like they're not telling their friends? Like, I feel like people like share things that they're afraid to be judged on or feel shame or. Yeah, it, it's mainly the sleep. Like, yeah. what are you doing for sleep? Like, I'm going crazy. Like, that that's really the biggest thing. And it's I'm glad that you hit on it and, and how your partner kind of should give you grace during that time. But I would say a lot of, like, what are you doing for sleep? And is it normal to feel this way? Um, you know, I'm doing, and just kind of a lot of the things that we've hit on. Yeah. Um, I feel like Instagram really has... It, it, People are like, you know, you're just messaging people you don't know. I'm like, no, I'm like, they're my friends. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you're, there's nothing like a friendship with another mom. Yeah. Um, I felt like as soon as I had Aubrey Grace, like I had a, a deeper connection to women in general because you just don't even realize like what moms are going through. A better connection with my mom. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I don't. I think I strayed away from. No, the I no. That's so true because I mean. I think you're afraid to tell maybe your support or I think you're afraid to tell like some of your friends, like mm -hmm. especially if they don't have kids or yeah. maybe the kids are older or maybe they're just not sharing with you the hard. Yes. So it's like they feel like you're a safe space mm -hmm. and to say, 
I am feeling depressed yes. or I feel overwhelmed. Mm-hmm. I'm crying a lot. Yes. This not sleeping is really making me feel X. Mm-hmm. And I think that's like one thing. It's like we as moms need to just like open and say, I'm a big component of sleep because I, if I don't sleep now, if the mm-hmm. boys are sick, mm-hmm. I'm not well. Yeah. And yeah, I agree. that's it's like just, you're sick in the morning. Yeah. I, and I'm just like the whole day can go left very quickly. Yeah. But here we're asking moms mm-hmm. to do this for like years. Yes. Oh, exactly. The, the next question is definitely like products that you actually need. And I think, cause like, let's be honest, what do baby companies do? Oh yeah. They target us. They go and they're you like, everything. you are going to be the best mom. But if you don't have X, right. your baby's not going to be this. Yeah. And you're just like, wait, what? Like, right. No. What I try to tell everybody is like, like, do I have everything? I'm like, if you're breastfeeding, if you have a boob, if you have a place for them to sleep, it doesn't have to be, their nursery does not have to be ready. No. Mm-hmm. Um, and what, what else? Diapers, Diapers wipes. wipes. And then you're good. And some clothes. Yeah, clothes. And I always say don't go crazy with the clothes. So true. Because they grow so fast. Mm-hmm. And people will buy you buttons. Yes. <laughs> and you're just like, I don't want these buttons. Hand me downs. Yeah. Like, I love Clinton's, um, he has two sisters. So we're like, please give it to us. I was like, we will accept it. <laughs> yeah. No, we do the same. And we're just like, we give ours away because we're just like, we don't, there's other things you can spend your money on. So true. It, with formula and stuff, like, I give props to all the moms that are formula feeding out there because I feel like I have it so easy because I'm just pulling up my shirt and here it is. Yeah. And they're having to spend 20, like 10 minutes making a bottle and all of that kind of uh-huh. stuff. So that's like extra time in the middle of the night that you're not getting sleep. Um, I don't know. I just think about that a lot. <laughs> well, you know, I switched over to formula with um, James mm-hmm. because he developed a dairy allergy. Okay. And I... So I could not live without it. And it just like literally if I had ate something, it would affect him for several weeks. It was horrible. Oh so we goodness. ended up switching. He went to the GI doctor. I mean, we did a whole workup and he had to get this super hypoallergenic formula, which made a world of difference That's for him. Amazing. But it was right before the formula shortage. Oh my goodness. So luckily he turned one That's as crazy. soon as that happened. But I had several friends who just had babies Mm. who could not find it. And mm. for whatever reason, we always say fed is best. And if it's your mental health, if it's your baby Surgery. has something, if you can't breastfeed, mm-hmm. if it's just not going to work, whatever, yeah. right? And you're relying on this and they couldn't feed their babies. And like we were all searching for formula for them. And it was like, it broke me. Oh, yeah. It's like, what? What's it the broke worst, me. What's the worst thing? You can't feed uh-huh. your baby. Like, mm-hmm. what am I going to do? So I, you know, I'm really hopeful that's like back and up going because like you can't ask that of moms Mm-mm. but that that was a huge thing I think moms are now dealing with that we never had to deal with oh yeah and it's you know I know a couple of mom like moms have shared like mm-hmm. they got sick they lost their milk supply yeah. they went back to work which we need to hit on you going back to work yeah. but um so I guess it's just saying I always say too with formula like buy it if you can before because you never know so true. My grandmother was like, you cannot rely on your milk coming in. Like, you need to have a backup plan because it doesn't always happen. It doesn't always happen. Or you, yeah. like, I always thought I was worst case thinking, and I do this still. I'm like, what if I got in a car wreck? So, oh, my gosh. So right. And I'm like, Bill's not going to know how to go to the store and buy for me. Yeah. Such a, like, mom thing to think of that it's like, far in advance. Like, yeah. what if? Uh-huh. I love it. So I'm like, I always, I always just say, like, if you need it, great. If you don't, but like, have it and have the, and like, no one taught me how to make a bottle. I don't know how to make a bottle. I should know. <laughs> they did not. And I, so we actually, in our digital library we have for our women, show, we have a lactation consultant who gives videos of how to do everything with breastfeeding, but she also teaches you how to make a formula bottle. I will go check that out. I need to know. Because it just, she just like, I didn't know. And I felt like asking, I'm like, I should know this. Yeah. But you don't. Yeah. And then here my like babysitters knew how to do it. And they're like 18. And I was like, oh boy, I'm the one that birthed the baby. (laughs) So, but they've been, someone taught them for umpteen years. So it was fine. But yeah, so I would tell moms, you don't know. She's like, it's so hard. I know. Okay. I'll, I'll try to keep, I didn't know you're getting so hungry. It's, it's the six weeks. I tell you, people don't tell you, do you do the, um, the leap? I do have the leap. The wonder um, weeks. Yes. Now that helped me. Now I think I think I'm on the fence how much I like put everything with it, but it made me feel better when we were all struggling. Yes. That 
he was developing mentally or physically, like, there's a reason why I can't calm you. Yes, 100%. I'm like, okay, let me look at my app. What's going on this week? Like, are you breaking teeth? Like, what what is going mm-hmm. on? But it was always some sort of, like, mental Ooh. leap. Mm-hmm. And I think that's something I tell, it's like two bucks. You can download it. But yeah. I tell moms, like, one or weeks help me rationalize things. But I had to learn some own coping skills because it's really stressful when your baby will not stop crying Mm -hmm. and you've tried everything. Yes. It's a lot. It's a lot. Mm -hmm. And I think everybody feels like it's a lot. Yeah. It's not just us. Mm -hmm. But let's talk about going back to work. Okay. I'm starting back December 5th. We have a spot at daycare um, for three days a week. I mean, everywhere around Birmingham, and I'm sure everywhere in the U.S., it's like wait list, wait list, wait list. Uh-huh. You basically have to put your kid on a wait list before you're pregnant. You have to. And we actually have to start paying before she even starts because other people want her. Oh, wow. Yay. Wow, okay. Good, good, good things. Uh-huh. Um, so, yeah, I, I, it's, it's always hard for me to start back work because I won't. It's scary to give your baby to somebody else. Yeah. No one's going to take care of your baby. or But they're in wonderful hands. You think, like, that's how I feel, but yeah. they always do a great job. Yeah. Um, But, and I, I feel like that's probably, I, I, that's a little scary for that. But in your mind, you're going to think, no one is going to love my baby like I do. But right. People do. People, like, literally just live for taking care of right. babies. Um, I always feel like that first day artist and then after that it's like okay we did it yeah they're okay right and I'm lucky because we're so close to daycare like if anything were to happen like I you're like run up. right there yes so what um other pieces of advice from moms transitioning back to work life do you have um I started pumping which I didn't do the first time with COVID going on she was at home for so long I didn't really have to worry about right. it so tips would be if you are breastfeeding just start storing up now so you're not like panicking yeah like what am I gonna do I have to get food um and then talk to other moms that have their kids in daycare what is it like right if you're starting a new daycare maybe talk to somebody that's there so you another mom there yeah so you know like what to expect and everything um what about you mentally how do you like do you give yourself like a little pep talk or do you say you know what I, I, so I hear moms say, I have mom guilt for going back to work. And I'm like, you shouldn't. Definitely. It's easy to have. Yeah. Because it's like you're expe- yeah. you're expected to work like you don't have kids, yeah. right? But then you're also supposed to mother like you don't work. So it's, it's like, thing. right? Because it's just like, so if the uh-huh. kids are sick, is it usually you that calls out or? So Clinton and I both work remote. Okay. So we're both at home. So we do have we're blessed in the fact that we can tag team. Yeah. If he has a call, then I'll watch her during this time. Then I'll probably, I'm on the phone all day because I'm a recruiter. Yeah. Um, so I'm usually like holding and like, hi, if you hear something in the background, um, it's my kid and right. she's at home cause she's sick. And right. really, I think COVID kind of normalized the working from home and they're like, Oh, it's okay. My kids are home today too. Right. And, um, I think we'll give a lot more grace than they used to. That's a good point. Yes. Um, but as far as the pep talk and going back to work, I mean, I think it's so important for women to have, like, their own piece of like, whatever. Whatever it is. Yes. It doesn't have to be work. Yeah. Um, but just something that makes them feel fulfilled. And some women, you know, just being a mom and putting all that effort into yeah. being a mom is what makes them feel fulfilled. But then some women want to really go after yeah. another aspect of Something that makes Everything me is equally hard. Mm-hmm. It is. Um, maternity leave has made me realize, like, how I don't know if I ever could be a full time stay at home mom because yeah. um, <laughs> it's a lot of work. Yeah, I need a break. Like, yeah. I would need like Mother's Morning out, like a little bit. <laughs> That's why I always tell moms, I'm like, no, because I was stay at home with Will for a whole year of his first life because we had moved to Birmingham, could not get any daycares in. We couldn't afford it. Yeah. And so expensive. It was, it was just, it was, so I was like, oh my gosh, this is the hardest thing. Like I was like, I really wanted to go back to work because I was like, this is, this is hard. And I had to figure out what to do like mentally with myself. 
because I used to have my purpose as like I was a nurse I'd go to work I would do this like I would have days where I'm like what did I accomplish and I had to be like whoa you kept him alive literally you kept him alive and that's that's awesome that's good enough that I don't think anybody ever said that to me Mm -hmm. like no one was like hey if you're this is what some common thoughts of like being trapped in traps a bad word but in a house with a baby all day you can't I mean you don't have social interaction sometimes like your husband maybe it's not gonna get what your day really was and they think (laughs) oh you're just like having the best day with your baby and you're like it's actually been really hard that has been a good thing about Clinton being home and he can see it and not you're right most dads aren't gonna be able to be there and see like you change probably 50 diapers uh, cleans the house maybe, but if you didn't, that's okay too. This is why supper's not ready. Yeah, this is why exactly. Um, or you know, the re- I couldn't calm her for mm-hmm. an hour. Or yeah, this and, is me and her both sobbing. Yeah, because it's hard in this moment. Yeah, one of my favorite TikToks. Um, my friend and I were talking about it last night. Um, a husband comes home and he's like, "Why well, isn't dinner ready? And why isn't the house clean?" And she's like, "Hold the baby." And she's like, "Why aren't you a millionaire?" And I'm like, "Oh yeah, that's there you I go. go. Oh, yeah. There you go. Yeah." I think it's just like, and that's we always say. So have postpartum expectation talks and plans. Yes. And something is like, we say family and visitors. Mm-hmm. We say who's going to help when, yes. or like what we even say. Sometimes you have to have like a code word with your partner oh. when you've reached your limit. That they need to tap in. Mm -hmm. And they're like, and some people are like, well, do you think they'll ever be used? I'm like, you will 100% use that code word. Yes. Especially if you want to like leave someone's house and Uh you're like, I I can't watch this kid and this kid. Uh You know, like let's, that's a, Mm -hmm. I I need a code word. A code word. And it's okay for them to be the bad guy or say, oh my gosh, we've got to get there. And we we even say do a code word, especially in the hospital. Because Mm -hmm. before COVID, I felt like literally your whole family would come visit you. I'm so glad we didn't have that. And I am, I tell my friends who I visit in the hospital, I'm like, I'm so sorry. Like, you had just been either cut open, yeah. ripped open uh-huh. at some point, yeah. and like, you were exhausted, you're bleeding, you're leaking, mm-hmm. you're like laying there. I mean, it's, and here I thought I had the whatever to come and be like, let's sit and chat. And it's that like, was the norm that, like, that was. And it's like, now we're just like, you don't have to, because COVID gave us that like little special time. Oh, yeah. Or if you don't want visitors, you don't have to. So we always say, say a code word. We even say, tell your nurse uh-huh. and be like, hey, I would really need some more ice. Uh-huh. Yes. And ice is it. And she'd be like, okay, you know what? Let's clear the room. I need to do this check. And you don't have to it. be the bad guy. That's amazing. So we are big Smart. on code words because let's be honest, people don't respect our boundaries sometimes. Um, this is real mom life. And I guarantee the moms who are listening to this, they have their kids with them. Okay. So true. This is like, we okay. don't expect it to ever be per- picture perfect because it's not life. Mm-hmm. It's not motherhood. Well, I like the code word. I'm definitely going to take that. Use the code word. I like it. I mean, we're all about that. And I guess we'll end on this. What do you just, what do you say to the fellow moms? Because you're in the trenches. Mm-hmm. It's like. I like that you say that when we've been texting you, like you're in the trenches. And I'm like, I am in the trenches. And that's why I think it's like, we have to normalize that. Like this is a, motherhood's hard at every stage. Mm-hmm. I really personally think the newborn stage to me has mm-hmm. always been my trenches okay. because I wasn't sleeping. Yeah. And my body was not like what I wanted it to be. Yeah. Um, so just what would you tell them? That everything gets better. You get to watch your little one grow up and develop and you all see them hit their milestones. Um, and the years, they are short. The days are long. So long. And the years are short. And it takes a village. Help, asking for help, accepting help is a sign of strength. Mm -hmm. Will you come back and when Sweet Girl's a little older and you tell us some more tips and tricks and give us all the details. And I want you to link. I know you've done this a lot on Instagram, but we're going to put like the things that you're living by. And we'll share that so that people know. We don't have to reinvent the wheel here. Uh Uh-uh. Like, take our advice, yes. know what works. Absolutely. But we thank you. <gasps> this was so fun. Yes. I can't wait to come back. Yes, come back next time. Okay. All right. Yay. Bye, guys. Bye. Maternal mental health is as important as physical health. The Preview Alliance podcast was created for and by moms dealing with postpartum depression and all its variables, like anxiety, anger, and even apathy. 
hosted by CEO, founder Sarah Parkhurst, and licensed clinical social worker Whitney Gay. Each episode focuses on specific issues relevant to pregnancy and postpartum. Join us and hear how other moms have overcome mental health challenges, as well as access tips and suggestions on dealing with your own challenges as moms. You can also browse our podcast library and listen to previous episodes at any time. Please know you're not alone on this journey. We're here to help.